in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. On YouTube, I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Stub Nuff 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I hope you enjoy the video that follows this introduction. Again, peace forever and always and respect you. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, the Angel Snub Nub 7, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another, hopefully, exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I was born in the 1960s. A few months after I was born, the President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, was assassinated. About two years later, I was probably two years old or three, one of our great leaders, Malcolm X, was assassinated. And then three years later, Martin Luther King. I lived, I was born during a period of civil rights struggle in America. Black people were standing up for their rights. And for the first time in our history, learning about their blackness on such a national level. All over the country, there was brother and sister talk. There was something called black pride. But within black pride, there were those who still carry a grave slave mentality. They still consider themselves colored people. They still consider themselves Negro. And the only reason why they didn't like black was because black was made to look as being an inferior. When I was growing up, I was darker than a lot of my family members and classmates. But what hurt so bad was the taunts and the mockery of my being dark, not from strangers, of which were black people, because I didn't really see white people until I got some age on me. I, it was a long time before I seen Caucasian people. It was black people who was making mockery that I was dark. I was called cold baby. Tar baby, you know, black Yankee, all anything, black devil. Some of y'all might call me a black devil today. <laughs> y'all some else. But uh yeah. So for me, I had to either learn how to love myself as being a dark black man or attempt to do what I've seen others do is try to make myself as Caucasian looking as possible. I am so happy that I had relatives in the Nation of Islam who gave me books that taught me how to love my black self. So it never got 
got that far where I had to experiment with trying to find a more Caucasian look or behave like a Caucasian, act like a Caucasian. And those who made mockery of me, since I began to learn what my blackness was, I learned how to defend that dark skin. I learned how to defend the big nose and the thick lips. And made those who were also dark, or maybe a lighter skin black, with big nose, thick, thick lips, and kinky hair, made them look silly because you're trying to be something that you're not. That's the subject of this video. Whereas I learned that I was a black man that come from a strong people. And I learned how to embrace my darkness. There are those back then and there are those now that hate their darkness. More and more, especially our celebrities, those blacks that can influence our babies, they are wearing their hair more straight, even if it's a weave, it's to make themselves look more Caucasian. They're putting more of this makeup on their faces to look more Caucasian. They're bleaching their skin. They make sure they get many as possible pictures to get taken with Caucasian people so they can say, look, I got Caucasian friends. When you talk about slavery or anything of the past, they do like this. They don't want to hear you because they don't want to think about and be rem reminded that they came from a people who were enslaved. I'm done with that. I'm better now. Can't you see how close I am to my master? When I see entertainers like Beyonce and Jay-Z and all those, they are filled with this material wealth and greed. They think the more successful they are, the more material things they get, they think that for some reason these Caucasians or going to accept them as one of their own. But when these blacks get in trouble, who do they call on them for help? Who do they call on to cry on their shoulder? Then they come back to their people. We should start to begin to reject people like that. Do you understand? Why should you be ashamed that you are children of slaves? That's true. And before you Caucasian begin to smile and grin and think that your beginnings is so great. Not too long ago, your ancestors came out of a cave walking on all fours. Didn't know how to take a bath. Look it up. Your own history. It's not a secret. So don't try to think or believe that you're greater. And that's another thing. Y'all Negroes who trying to be Caucasian. If you want to be part of them, then get on your all, on your all fours. And declare that the dog is your best friend. Some of y'all already eating raw meat. You wear animal fur. You want to be like them. That's where they come from. They just came out of a cave, a little less than or a little more than 6,000 years ago. None of us can brag about our humble beginnings. And all of us came from a sperm and egg. Have y'all seen that sperm and egg? Well, maybe in some porno flicks, some of y'all off into that. That's where you began. So none of us should try to be bragging about, I'm so great and I'm this and that. Look where you come from. Check out any porno movie. Or people in your next door neighbor. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't peep in your next door neighbor with it. Ain't that <laughs> Why are you shame, black man? Why are you shame, black woman? To be a children from a slave. You think like that's so bad. I embrace it because even though my people were enslaved for over 300 years, it did not break us. We're having problems. We still have a slave mentality. But we made it. We endured that for 300 years, not 30 days, not 30 years, for 300 years. They put slavery on us. And the only thing we did was duck and jab like, like a brilliant boxer. We knew how to be flexible and deal with the oppression. There ain't nobody on this planet. The Jews claimed they had a holocaust. And they still complaining about the holocaust and what somebody did this and somebody did that. Black folks, our general attitude is, hey, what's done, what's done is done. It is what it is. <laughs> but the only problem with that is that we're trying to be like those who oppressed us. Learn how to love yourself for a change. There ain't nothing wrong with you, black man. There ain't nothing wrong with dark skin, kinky hair, big lips, whatever. Look at all the people copying everything we do. Oh, y'all got it all messed up. Accept who you are and be yourself. Love yourself. This is your brother, Tali Kimi Rock, because I love my damn self. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace, fam, and always, welcome once again to another edition of the Reality's Temple on Earth. I am your brother, the host, and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Rock. Let me take these uh, shades off. I want to send my condolences and offer uh, sympathy to the family of the little sister, seven years old, who was uh, shot by the Detroit Police Department, I guess this weekend, in a raid. Every day. Black people hurt. Every day, senseless death. We probably are the number one people who give money to funeral homes. Aren't y'all, aren't we tired of dying senseless like this? Aren't we tired of suffering like this? Why? Why do we suffer like this? Every day, there's a funeral home right down the street from where I reside. Don't you know it gets constant business? I'm, oh, black unity, y'all. If you don't seek black unity, this is going to continue and get worse. Because black unity will show other black people our value. And there's a lot of things that we do that put us in situations that cause us senseless death. Let me say this before my time runs out, because y'all know how these videos go. I want to say very and make something very clear. I am not anti-police. There are a lot of police out there, law enforcement officers, that truly try to help the community. There's no doubt about that. But in police culture, they have a Rambo type mentality. And I know because I have experienced it myself. They get all hyped up. I can imagine those police officers when they threw that bomb into that home. They get this Rambo thing. Plus, remember, since they are entering a 
a premise unannounced, they have to be ready for gunfire. Somebody maybe with a weapon coming out shooting at them. So it's all hyped up. The adrenaline is running. Because I know when they came after me, there are things they don't have to do. They broke down my door, sprayed the dog in the face with mace. Didn't have to do all that. For nothing. I even asked the police officer. I could have easily opened the door for you. You didn't have to break down the door, man. I proved myself. I wasn't running from you. I was running to you. But they got this Rambo mentality, these police officers. And especially when it comes to black people, they want to turn. You ain't got nothing as is, so they want to turn your door down. Tear your house up. Go through all your stuff. Tear it all up. Having no concern with how you living. That's how they are. Even some of these fire people. I, we had a fire one time. The fire was not even in our apartment. It was in the apartment next door. They wanted to tear our apartment up. I said, look, fire guy, what the hell are you doing? He got the act right. Well, man, the fire is out. These professionals, so-called professionals, get this Rambo syndrome. They get hyped up over this. They like turning and destroying things up. But I want to be fair to the police on this video because I'm about being fair and being just. This don't necessarily have to be a race issue because there are Caucasian people who have went through the same thing. But it's very sad that black people always got to go through this kind of madness. I want to be fair to the police, the Detroit Police Department. And the guy who they was after has responsibility. You knew, chances are, the guy that they was after, he knew they was after him. And he ran to his grandmother's house, I guess. If somebody is after me, why would you run to your grandmother or some other relative to put them in harm's way? And you know that the police got AK-47s or whatever Bombs and all this kind of stuff to come after people. You got the city of Detroit coming after you. And you're going to run to your grandma's house. You knew. Some of these relatives know the police are after their relative. And they let them stay with them. So this little sister, this young girl, yes, she was killed by Detroit Police Department. But responsibility goes to the relative. Or the friend or whoever they was, they let them hide them, let him hide them, him in their home. Now, the police have a responsibility too. You should have had your, uh, your eyes dotted because you knew you were going to this home and there were innocent people might be in there. Did you really have to throw a bomb in there? Y'all got sophisticated equipment. You could have called that house and said, look, we think y'all harboring a criminal. I think you, he needs to give himself up. Or we're going to have to use uh, force. But nobody, nobody was thinking about nothing. And so my little sister, who only had seven years of life, she's gone for nothing. So the responsibility must be shown on both sides. The police and their crazy Rambo mentality. And the family that allowed a criminal to hide in their house. And the suspect himself. Because he knew. But they do it all the time. These Negroes always doing something crazy and they run to their relative's house. Keep your ass in the street. But you always want to bring your madness to somebody else. And now a little girl is dead. Don't bring to me that black, black, and that's because they was black. These people, that Negro knew. And he was accused of murder. So the police must treat him as a dangerous person. 
They don't want to get killed. So they got to do what they got to do in order to protect themselves. But again, if they knew that there were innocent people this man was hiding, he was using them as a human shield, so to speak. Then they could have changed their tactics. But again, Rambo, they used Rambo on me. There was nothing dangerous about my case except a piece of damn paper with some words they said sound like it was a threat. What does it sound like a threat? Either it is a threat or it's not. They say it sound like a threat. So it sounds, some words on a piece of paper sounded like a threat. So that was worth locking my door in, tearing my door up, spraying my dog with me, and tearing my damn house up. Because it sounds like a threat. No. Now that was racist. Here's a chance to destroy a black man or a black person. Tear their house and property up. Get some money out of them because you're going to need a lawyer, buddy. And you're going to have, you change it up. And then you got to replace all this stuff. The door and all this kind of stuff that we don't tow up. And change it up, you got to buy from our other brothers and sisters who sell those things because blacks probably don't sell it. Because blacks are consumers, not producers. That's racism. This incident here, I can't really make a clear call. Because that man, that, that, I'm not gonna say brother, cause that was, he shouldn't have done that. Now this poor little sister is dead. Pisses me off. But this kind of stuff is gonna continue, y'all. Because we don't wanna unify. Cause we selfish! How many little girls gonna die? How many little boys gonna die? Your mother might be next. Your father. You might be next. And black unity could have saved them. But you too, high and mighty. You'll get the message one day, won't you? Peace to the, to, to the family of little sister. I think her name is Anya. Thank y'all for listening. Think about it, y'all. We got to unite on this. Thank you for listening. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. Jot down your comments, y'all. Give the family respect. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. I am the Angel Snuffin' Up Seven, and welcome once again to another edition of the Reality's Temple on Earth. I am your host your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Rome. I just noticed, and I don't know how many days has passed, but it's sad as much as I watch uh, television or the news, I missed out on the report that Thomas uh, Hagen or Hagen, one of those who were charged with the murder of the late civil rights leader or black Muslim leader or the representative of Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, Malcolm X, was released. Two other men who claim they were not innocent prior to him have already been released. And so now he is the third, but what makes him different from those who have been released before him is that this brother admitted his participation in the murder of Malcolm X. The murder of Malcolm X, the assassination of Malcolm, was a horrendous crime. His little girls watched him be cut down 
like some savage animal in the forest. They watched their father die on the floor of the Audubon Ballroom on February 25th, 1965. How horrible could that be? Can you imagine yourself as a child watching your father, the violence? And it was not white men or any other enemy of black people it was black men that decided, for whatever reason, to mow down another black man. So before my time runs out on this video, I want to get your opinion on how do you feel about this murderer, and that's what he is, being released from prison. Many of us believe if these men were uh, the killers of some great white icon, some Caucasian leader, they would not be released for no reason. Now, I'm not a lawyer for Caucasian people, as you know, but there are those, such as in the case now, President Ronald Reagan did not die, but he was shot, and he could have died, but as you know, the uh, one who attempted to murder President Reagan, he is allowed to roam free. He has passes. And of course there was outrage when they found out that this man who shot the president is being allowed to go visit his parents and go to the store, escorted, but he still has these privileges. So in many cases, we must be fair, there are times, and I don't know exactly how they come up with these decisions in the court system, and there is bias against black people, there's no doubt, but there are many cases where there are Caucasians who have murdered prominent Caucasians, and in this case the President of the United States was uh, uh, attempted murder, but they are, they are also released or whatever, but that's a question all in itself. I, I'm not, I want to know, how do we feel about this brother being released? And many of us, see this is the sad thing about it, many of us claim that we are believers in God, and if we are believers in God, then that means we must have compassion and mercy. When this man committed this heinous crime, he was a young man. He was foolish. And I don't know if he, if he is sincere or not, but he has shown great remorse. And he has offered apology. And even being released, he earned his degree in prison and he wants to go out into the community and help those young black uh, men and women, our children, so that they don't follow the same path that he done. And see, it's very difficult. I don't know about you for me, but when a person shows sincere remorse, when they show apology, their actions, not their talk. See, that's the problem with the relationship between black people in the United States and this government and the Caucasian citizens. What the Caucasian citizens in this nation don't understand is that this government has not shown remorse to the 300 year old hell that they placed on the backs of black people in this country. They have, shown, have not shown proper apology. They have not shown sincerity. So it is difficult to forgive and trust someone who just runs their mouth because they give you affirmative action, because they give you handouts. But still, a black man serves more time for the same crime than a white man will. The same prejudice, the same type of Jim Crow, except it's now done in an overt type manner. But it still exists. And unless it directly affects you, 
And for many Caucasian people, it don't. So you really don't trip off of it. And even if you're black, unless it affects you directly, some of y'all got are close to the white man and you live a little comfortable so those things don't bother you until you get in trouble. Then here you go running around screaming, it's racism, it's, it's always been there. But as long as you and the Caucasian people are comfortable, as long as you can smile and skin and grin, everything is all right. But when something go down and you know, see you live in a fantasy world some of y'all black people do. Because I got white friends. Because I'm in, I'm in corporate America. Do you think that Louis Gates Jr. learned a lesson when this white police officer arrested him in his own house? No, he did not. There he goes again, sitting and grinning. Y'all never learn nothing. Because there has been no changing of no law. The bias is still there. The discrimination is still there. The prejudice is still there. Nothing has changed in the system because these systems are the same as they were prior to black people so-called being free. You free the black man, you free the citizens, so-called citizens of this country, the African Americans, but you maintain and you keep the same system that were designed to oppress them, designed to harass the dark. So it is no shock that you have an immigration law in Arizona. But then again, that's a whole new subject because you've started that. But now that your money is funny, like always, we always got to find a scapegoat for something. Mexican persons been coming back and forth across the border as long as this country been in existence. Because you like that cheap labor. You like having somebody to always look down upon. And if you're not looking down upon black people, now you find somebody new dark that you can discriminate and have a good time and make them the new slave. You like that. And then there are black people because they have bad relations with Mexicans. Join the bandwagon. But you don't understand that as long as you are dark, this racist Caucasian people have uh, have attacked and oppressed all dark people, including the so-called Mexicans. And then, and now they created this situation, and now we are fighting the Mexicans, and the Mexicans are fighting the blacks. When this racist Caucasian European started the whole thing to begin with, but then you don't say nothing to him. We are so wacky. But my time is out. That's a whole new subject in itself. I think we should be able to forgive this brother. He was a young man, foolish. It's been a long time, and murder is horrendous. But if y'all claim to be so compassionate and loving, then I think perhaps we should be and act like on what we believe. I don't know, it's up in the air. I think I can show compassion and forgiveness. Why not? Why not? I think Malcolm would do so. Anyway, knock down your comments, time is out. Peace, y'all. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, the Tali Keeping Raw, and welcome once again to another edition. In the name of my ancestors, this is the Realities Temple on Earth. <laughs> Love those graphics, don't you? <laughs> I am the Angel Snub Nub 7, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would just like to inform my audience that I have had a discussion by email with my brother Pastor Ray Hagens and I want to tell y'all something when I emailed Pastor Hagen I respect him but I think that I sort of chastised him a little bit 
And I think I went off a little bit on Brother uh, Hagen. But you want to know something? Now, this is, this is the character of Pastor Hagen. Because I know, I know I said some things that should have pissed him off. But he replied to me, thanks for your concern, brother. And he explained his position in regard to this little conflict between himself and uh, Oscar Kwesi and Brother uh, Sarah Sutton I have emailed Brother Sarah Sutton but he has yet to respond. So I can only talk to us from the point of view that I get from Pastor Hagen and it is something that I expect from somebody that has character. Somebody that has integrity. Because I'm telling you he should have went off on me. He should have wrote me back. Nigga, who the hell you think you're talking to? That's what he said. And who the hell are you? What is a colleague? <laughs> That's what he, he should have said. But he didn't. He explained his position. And if you notice, you don't see... Brother Hagen coming out with no video to counter or to degrade or make mock or anything, Brother Quasi or Brother Say, because he's not like that. Now, I went back into the archives, and this thing is so, it's really amazing to me. First of y'all, some of y'all are blind ass followers. Y'all believe any damn thing. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a possibility that Pastor Hagen could be an agent. That the possibility is there. The possibility is there that I could be an agent. The possibility is that your ass could be an agent. And Sandy could be an agent. But to bring some weak ass evidence that you found on Facebook, ah, oh, come on, that's a joke. If it's that easy, so I guess if Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad and the Black Panthers had uh, looked, investigated the New York Times or the New York Post a little bit more, they would have found the agents that infiltrated their organizations. Come on, in Facebook? Pastor Hagen, I don't know what his personal finances is, but I do know that in the city of St. Louis, Pastor Reagan's radio broadcast could not be maintained because he was not getting proper funding. That's point blank. If he was an agent, you would think that the law enforcement could give him some money, and then why would law enforcement give support an agent that's teaching black people to wake themselves up, to, to turn them towards Africa, instead of keeping them embraced in a religion that has worked to keep us in bondage like Christianity for the last 300 years. That don't, the whole thing don't make no sense. And, if, and just like Judge Judy always say, if it don't make any sense, chances are it's not true. But there's such hatred. Where does this hatred come from? It all started because Brother Hagen took some videos on a tour that was uh, given by uh, Asha Kwesi. And then his, then Brother uh, Hagen decided to put it down on DVD and sell it. And Asha Kwesi didn't like it because it was his tour and he felt he owned the rights to Pastor Hagen's legally, no, 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 that ain't how it go. No, you just because that's your tour, legally you don't have nothing to stand on, brother. That's just the bottom line. You don't get mad at this man because you think that he's making big time money. Come on, y'all. This is going to be black power. This is going to be black liberation. Where is y'all head at? Are you really tripping like that? And y'all following people like that? If that really is an issue, you are uh, pastor taking money out of my mouth because he on a tour. You don't own Egypt. There are many people that take their video 
cameras and whatever. That's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's very rare. So you mean to tell me I got to, you know, I can't share my experience with other people? I got to pay you? Come on. Now, even if that's so, you mean to tell me that you and brother, y'all was the best of friends, man. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, Sadie. These men was the best of friends. There are a video on YouTube right now to show you their bond, their friendship. And y'all gonna fall out over some money? Y'all gonna fall out over a damn video of Egypt? Ah, uh, come on, y'all, a joke. And that's why people starting to turn away from this so-called black power movement. This com comedic uh, path. Because y'all going crazy. Just like y'all and you, I heard Seti admire brother John Henry Clark. John Henry Clark, I just listened to one of his lectures, and he was talking about how if Farrakhan was such a friend to Malcolm, and Farrakhan said in himself that he ate at Malcolm's table, that's how close they were. But then when this thing went down, how could you easily turn on your friend like that? This is my, this is, this is the man I share so much time with. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna to turn my back on him like that. Here you are, brother crazy. Here you are, brother hanging. Y'all brothers in a struggle, man. And over a videotape. And now Sandy making 25 videos, you are agent and Facebook, and Jerry Specialism, and blah, blah. Over videotape? Y'all got that kind of hatred? Oh, Lord. Uh, Cause with some money? So that means you got the man that's called Ray Hagen, an agent, and y'all can get bumped because this is about money. So if the right person come to you, you'll sell out, right? Because you're going to fall out over with Brother Hagen over videotape? Over some money? Y'all... That's your brother. Y'all at one time loved each other. Brother Crazy was part of the African village. We were one family, man. Go behind closed doors. Talk with one another. And say, look, I see that y'all, that you're a little upset about this. Look, why don't we share the profits in the video? You know, since I did take this video on your tour, I give you this amount of percentage for the amount of DVDs or whatever I sell or whatever. But y'all don't go to war with one another? That's crazy. That's insane. And so now you got our people all messed up in the head. They fighting one another. The whole black power movement is a confusion and y'all gone nuts. And personally myself, I stay the hell away from all of it. I don't want to get involved. Maybe that's the reason why... My subscriptions are climbing because they want to be, the people want to be around somebody that got some goddamn sense. They're all falling out the damn tree. But Pastor Hagen is willing to sit down and talk because he knows this is damaging this great thing that y'all built. You're going to destroy what y'all built over a damn videotape, over a few Trump dollars. Come on. Oh, come on. Brother Seti, I'm asking you, Brother Crazy, contact Brother Hagen. The man got a good heart and you know it. He knows that y'all got good hearts. Call each other and talk with one another. And let's stop this. We got bigger fish to fry. Somebody that want to kill you, that want to kill me. And hurt our people and keep us slaves in this wretched condition. This is your brother Tony. Keep it right. Jot down in your comments. Oh, man. This hurts me. This was and is. The reality is tough on earth. And I wish it wasn't. Not this type of reality. Peace. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Taliki Ibn Ra. And welcome once again to another edition of the Reality's Temple on Earth. I am the Angel Snuff Nuff Seven, your brother and hopefully your friend 
Tali Evie Rum. I just wanted to uh, offer my response to this question about the extermination of white people and to clarify my position on this uh, issue or subject matter. I first uh, would like to say, in revolution, according to past history, we have been unable to have revolution or rebellion of the people without bloodshed. So perhaps sometimes uh, this is something that cannot be avoided. But in the meantime, I would hope that we would think a bit more clearer. I would think that we would be more wiser. And in these things, I want to offer us these questions. Exterminate the white people. Kill the white people. That's what I hear. That's why. That's what some people send me as an email that I don't understand that the white man must be exterminated. That will solve the world's problems. Now listen to these points I make before you come up with that conclusion. These must be dealt with before you begin your uh, insane death march to exterminate this uh, Caucasian people. First of all, white is just a color. The color didn't do nothing to us. Caucasian color did not enslave. Caucasian color had nothing to do with any of these evils. It's just the color of a person, a shade of their skin. Either we have pigment in our skin or we don't. The main thing that you must take in consideration here is the mentality that encompass or that some or a vast majority of Caucasian people have. It's the mentality that has caused or wrecked havoc upon darker people or this planet itself. That's something that you must have to deal with because in many situations around the earth, there are no Caucasian people. Just like a brother said in our neighborhoods, there are no Caucasian people in our neighborhoods. But we murder each other as black people. There are no Caucasians and we steal from one another. There are no Caucasians, but a black man will rape a black woman. Where is the Caucasian involved? It is not skin color. So you can exterminate all the white people, but if that mentality is not destroyed, the only thing you did was set aside a color or a race of a people carrying that type of mentality, but you have still will lose because that mentality is still within us. Now, you want to kill the white people, exterminate the white people. You only want black people involved, but you don't have the support of black people. We are divided. He is over there, she is over there. We have no army. You have no money to support your army. You do not have the support of black people in America or around the world. You have no allies. There is no African nation that's going to back you up. There is no foreign nation that's going to back you up in your attempt. You have not the proper armaments, the proper tanks, the proper bombs, the proper tools needed in order to carry out this plan of extermination. And what is so sad, more, uh, many of you who claim that you want to exterminate black people and you call people cowards. I don't see any videos. This is your attitude. But I don't see any videos praising the young Nigerian uh, young black man that attempted to blow up the airplane. None of you, even though that's what you said, that you want to commit or exterminate the white people. Here's a young black man that was going to take down a whole plane of them. You don't praise him, you don't honor him because you talk about somebody being a coward, but you won't say that outright. You might say it in your mind because you don't want that type of attention brought to you because really, you're a coward yourself. Anybody can say anything. That young Nigerian did not only, might not have only said it, but he took action upon it. You really don't want no part of this. Then you 
uh, uh, are insane in your thinking. The only thing that's going to happen is that the black people that you claim that you want to free, those of us who are part of law enforcement, those of us who are in the military, will come and hunt you down when you begin your activity of so-called exterminating white people. You will be called a, a domestic terrorist, and you will be hunt down and you will be killed. Then you will either be taken to the moor, or you will be given life without parole, or you will sit on death row for years. And you will not be seen as a hero, you will be seen as an insane criminal running around killing white people. You know why you will be seen not as a hero? Because in this world, you don't want to admit but there are Caucasian people, there are white people who had nothing to do with slavery, that do, uh, that do not practice discrimination or evil against darker people. But you and your rage, you want to be just like them because they don't give a damn what black man they killed or oppressed. They were just running around lynching a black man for the hell of it. And that's your mentality. So, you won't be seen as a hero because you will be seen as the killer of innocence. Like I said, whether you like it or not, there are Caucasian people, there are white people, and you show me any proof that they had anything to do with the oppression of black people. There is a uh, minority that have always stood against slavery, that have always stood against segregation and the oppression of black people in America. And you just went around and exterminate the white people just like they decided to oppress all of us. So your attitude is no better than theirs. Then, let's say for instance, if you do, for some reason, exterminate the white people, then what are you going to do? What type of world do you plan on building? What do you want to do? Turn everybody into Muslims? Do you want to turn everybody into Egyptians? Do you want to turn everybody into Moors? What is your plan for the human family? What do you plan for Asian people? What do you plan for the Native Americans? You want to exterminate the white people. You say that they are the main problems. But then when the white people are exterminated, you will continue to have problems because the mentality that really is the root of it, that is the problem, is still there. Just the fact that you want to exterminate white people shows that you are no better than they are. You still have the same mentality instead of it being uh, white uh, superiority now you want to make it black and you want to blame all the white people for your problem just like they blame us for all their problems. And we become no better than them. We should be wiser. We should be smarter. We should be wanting to create a world that is different than them. Because their world is crumbling. And those who like them, prior to them, that thought like that, they no longer exist. And if you want to exterminate the white people and create a world with this type of mentality, then we also will continue the same legacy and we won't exist. I suggest that we be smarter. I suggest that we be wiser. And in this idea, this way of thinking, we should set aside and go on. If we want to exterminate white people, exterminate them in that mentality and decide to create a world that is different than what they've done. Then, when you destroy that mentality, you will exterminate the white people. This is your brother. Jot down your comments. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. Peace forever and always. In the name of my ancestors, I am the Angel Snub Nub 7 here on uh, YouTube your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another edition 
of the realities temple on earth. Excuse me because I'm sort of I'm sort of sad. I'm I'm sort of sad because this uh, conflict between Pastor Ray Hagen, uh, Ashray Crazy, I believe that's how you pronounce the name, and uh, my brother Saraz Sudan said it's it continues. I don't like to see us at each other's throat. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but just like all families, I mean just like myself, my brother, my physical flesh brother visited uh, me Thanksgiving and he did not like what I had to say about police officer because he is a police officer and so he left our Thanksgiving holiday a very angry person but we are family and we both know regardless to our difference in opinion he knows if something happened to him or I know if something happened to me that we would be there quickly and immediately we are family, and this is all we have. So it saddens me, and it hurts me to the core that we have very few strong black men in black power. We have very few black men in black liberation that we have this dispute among us. I would say I wanted to respond to Brother Seti's video but he has it where you cannot place a video response of which makes me, I mean, that's questionable in itself. Why aren't you allowing video responses? You know, we should always be able to have an opportunity to talk to one another. My time is going to run out, so let me try to get straight to the point I want to make. Pastor Ray Hagens comes or... I knew him from being here in St. Louis. I'm living here in the St. Louis, Missouri area. Pastor Ray Hagen, the African village, is in St. Louis, Missouri. I have spoken to Pastor Ray Hagen. I have been to his uh, church, uh, his temple. In fact, I am, my thinking is really formulated about a lot of the things that I heard from Pastor Ray Hagen's, if, if it was not for Pastor Ray Hagen's, I would not be who I am right now. And some of y'all might say, that's why I don't like the dude. <laughs> See what he did to you? He messed you up. <laughs> y'all something else, come on. Now, in this video, Pastor Ray Hagen's is, he's called a, a agent. Could be true. It might not be true. But let, let us look at something. They found this information on Facebook. That in itself. I mean, come on now. So you mean to tell me they're going to make this information that easy by saying that this, this shows that Pastor Hagen is in some way affiliated and a secret agent on Facebook. Come on now. That's, that's, that's questionable in itself. Now, they say that the FBI or some agents gave him his religious doctrine in order to teach the people. If the FBI, the CIA, or any of these people were very smart, why didn't they keep Ray Hagen just, keep, just teaching Christianity? Christianity is more acceptable to our people than anything of a comedic nature. Isn't that, isn't that right? Why would secret agents want Pastor Hagen to teach a teaching that most of us will reject? That don't make no sense. You want people to embrace it, not reject it. Come on now. We need to 
Just because you don't like somebody, we're trying to find anything to hurt each other. We should give ourselves the benefit of a doubt. When it is factual, when it is clear. If that's the case, because Pastor Hagen has a Caucasian friend in law enforcement, then I'm a secret agent. Because of my affiliation, I, if you look at my friends list, you might see some some uh, friends on my uh, on my page that could be considered racist Caucasian people. So that makes me an agent too, because I have befriended some Caucasian people. Chances are, a lot of times, I have spoken to these uh, people. And we have an understanding. So there is no hatred, even though this white man might claim to be a neo-Nazi. He has no hatred towards me. We've spoken, and there's an understanding. And see, this is the, the advantage. I don't know how Pastor Hagen thinks, but this is how I think. That neo-Nazi can go places where I can't go. That neo-Nazi can hear things I can't hear. Then he'll come back and tell me because we're cool. We have an understanding. We don't, we don't know how to take advantage of nothing. If I have a Caucasian friend and I want to know about neo-Nazi, then my Caucasian friend can join that organization and learn what they're doing and what they're saying behind closed doors. And he can come back and tell me so I can get the heads up. Or Pastor Hagen and this Caucasian law enforcement officer or whatever, they just might be friends from going to some school together. Who knows? But I really don't see Pastor Hagen as some kind of secret agent, some kind of agent, where he could be teaching Christianity something much easier. Like I say, if there, if there are, if the government is backing up Pastor Hagen, then you tell me why is he so poor? Pastor Hagen is so poor in St. Louis that he had to cancel his radio broadcast because the people was not supporting him. He had to go in his own pocket, find his own money to support his radio broadcast because he wasn't getting any support from the St. Louis community or uh, those who are under his voice. If he was funded by the government, if he was a secret agent, how come he don't have no damn money? How come he's not funded so he can trick us, so he can deceive us? Those are the questions that I want to place before us. But we got this hatred for our own people. We don't want to give them the benefit of a doubt because we mad. We act, we act like little, look like little girls. Well, Pastor Hagen called the police on us. And what was the conflict? Maybe he thought he didn't have no choice. What was you doing to cause it? We don't want to talk about what we done. We always want to talk about what they did. All these things we need to question. If you see me in conflict with somebody, don't just take my side. Ask me, brother, what the hell did you do? See what I'm saying? What did you do to cause it? This is the United States of America. You better do things according to the law. If you don't, you could be facing the death penalty. And if I want to give my life, I'm not, want, I don't, not going to give my life on something stupid and silly. Hell yeah, I call the police and let the white man handle your ass. Since I can't talk to you as a brother, we can't sit down, we don't have no damn sense. Hell yeah, I call the police. you damn skipping because you want to be stupid and silly. Or either you end up hurting me. So I question this. I love Brother Seti. I love Pastor Hagens and Brother Quaze. Did I say that right? But come on now. We need to stop this. 
and try to be family. All this back and forth bickering. And you wonder why the people don't give a damn about nothing we're saying or doing. Look at how we act. This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. Jot down your comments. This was and is, and peace to all black power and liberation. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. Peace forever and always. In the name of my ancestors, I am the Angel Snuffin of Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend. Talik Ibn Ra. And welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Excuse me as I uh, uh, gotta get comfortable. What brings me uh, to this subject as I always watch the devil's media and those who are in charge, those who control the media, as far as I'm concerned, are devils and demons. Do you know why I say that? Because they are biased and they are prejudiced against the needs and the wants and the best interests of black people in the United States as well as around the world. They use their media to paint us in horrid uh, manner, never in the best of light, and they deny us true media coverage. They always showing us as pimps, as murderers and robbers. They don't never want to show us when we accomplish things and in good light. They want to show, for example, CNN. They have something, uh, a series called The State of Black America. And they show all us black Americans. But if you notice, there's no representation from the black power movement. Why is that? And you got to, you want to call me, you, you, you talking hate. You're saying that the people that control the media are haters. Well, then you tell me if what I'm saying is not true in your in CNN series, the state of black America, and all the different facets of a black Americans are supposed to be presented, then why you don't see nobody that represents black power, black liberation, the black revolution? None of us. Not one. You chose Negroes, you chose dark Europeans that can paint America as a happy place, that paint America as angels, that paint America, if you get opportunity, look at us. I'm a Negro, but look how I made it. That's not the reality in this nation. That's a damn lie, and you know it. It's 60 to 70 million black people in this country. You can't tell me they are satisfied. Because if they were satisfied, then you could not have a black power movement. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have to have a civil rights bill. And all, you wouldn't have to have affirmative action and all this other craziness, these other crumbs and scraps from your table that you give black folk. Y'all some fake ass Caucasian people. And, and speaking of fake ass Caucasian people, you have Tony Blair, who made this statement, talking about Iraq is better without Saddam Hussein. That's your damn opinion. If the Iraqis really wanted to get rid of Saddam Hussein, they could have done it. So apparently, they didn't mind him being in control. That's your opinion. And that's the thing about y'all Caucasian folks. And this is a message to the white folks out there. Y'all goody two-shoe-ass people. You only give a damn about yourself. Some of y'all got the nerve to come to me. 
and talk about I should be satisfied because of affirmative action and some of these other. That's you. You satisfied. I'm not satisfied. What, what don't hurt you probably hurt me. You can't walk in my shoes. How you gonna tell me I shouldn't be hurting? But that's what you, that's y'all problem. You always want to control somebody. Tell somebody how to think. I'm not your damn slave. We are not your slaves no more. Get that, get that in your damn raggedy ass head. I'm not your slave, son. I'm not your slave anymore, dopey. Get the hell out of here. This idiot told me we should think about all people suffering. I don't have nothing to do with all people suffering. Just like if you got hit with a baseball bat, what they got to do with me? I can't feel that. That's between you and the person that hit you with the baseball bat. If you don't want to address your suffering, your oppression, that's your business. Don't tell me if I get hit with a baseball bat, then I'm going to take the person that hit me with a baseball bat to court. In fact, I'm going to pick up a rock and bust the that damn person that hit me with a baseball bat upside their damn head. If you want to sit around and let the person hit you with a baseball bat and get away with it, that's your business. Don't come and tell me talk about what you done. That's your business. My ancestors had no voice. They could not stand. And my ancestors include those born in the 1950s, those who did work in the 1960s, 70s. They are my ancestors. We are a people. Those who sit in jail right now, innocent of their crimes, but because of this racist judicial system, then when they get out, and then when they get out, and you knew they was innocent when you put them in your racist ass system, prejudice system, you don't even offer apology. In most states, you can't even sue and get any kind of compensation. Get the hell out of here. You always want people to bow down to what you think, what you think is best. Who the hell are you? What you think is best? If what you think is best, how come you in in Afghanistan fighting and dying? How come you in 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 uh, Iraq fighting and dying? If what you know how to do is best, how come you in conflict with Iran and North Korea and other places that you don't tell us about? If what you do is best, you are a warmonger and you are a hater. Everything you want to try to police the world. You want everybody to be like America. Here we are, having an earthquake in Haiti. It's about Haitians, it's about this country, it's about human beings being hurt. The first thing, first chance they get, how many Americans died. I don't give a damn about how many Americans died. All thing I see is human beings, but they got a point, make a difference. Oh, see, that's how many Haitians died. And out of them, these are the Americans. So what you're saying is American life is more special than Haitian life, a black Haitian? Which you should be happy with black Haitians, because they worship your damn white-ass Jesus. And they called out for Jesus, that white Jesus. And you see what happened to them. And still happening to them. That damn... Caucasian Jesus ain't done nothing for him ever since. That's one of the reasons why I started not to donate to Haitians. Let your God take care of you. Since you got so much faith in God and God can do this and blah, 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 then let your God take care of you. <laughs> and if you wait on your God to take care of you, <laughs> the whole island will be dead. There's no doubt about it. Y'all silly and need to stop and get your mentality out of that fictional mindset. It's all about what Caucasian, what you believe is right. Who make you the keeper of righteousness? Matter of fact, what's right about you? You are an enslaver. You are a liar and you're a deceiver. And you don't want to hear black voices to remind you because you want to 
live this illusion like you so angelic. And you ain't nothing but a murderer, a liar, and a cheat. You want to claim about how smart you are. Who created, who caused this financial economic crisis that you're in? Black people? No. Caucasian Jews and Caucasian themselves. Y'all done it. If there was some kind of way you could blame black people, you would. But since we don't have no power, we don't have no influence in banking, <laughs> you know you couldn't get away with that lie. Y'all are smarter than that. My time is running out. <laughs> I ain't your damn slave. You need to take your happy ass on else somewhere. And if you come here, I'm going to whoop your ass just I like that damn Kilo 34, whatever his name is, got his ass whooped. You don't come here with that nonsense. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. I hope y'all understand where I'm coming from. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his divine masculine brother, Administer Talik Ibnrad.